Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and I'm here with Movie and a Stitch. Now, I did not bring the projects I was working on, because one of them has already gone on to the church, <laughs> and the other one, the other two items were what I showed you in the regular episode. These are these scarves. I still have to get the yarn to finish them. But that's what I was basically working on, was working on those scarves. When I realized I don't have enough yarn. Oh, the horror. I watched two movies. The first movie that I watched was Thunder Force. And yes, I enjoyed Thunder Force. Thought it was funny. The two actors, I absolutely adore them. Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer. They are some of my favorite comedian, comedic actors. And I love anything that they are in. It is something that was directed by Ben Falcone, which is Melissa McCarthy's husband. And basically this story follows a a collaboration between two childhood friends who invent a way to become superheroes in a world where criminals have developed superpowers. Um, the film was digitally released by Netflix April the 9th, 2021. It received generally negative reviews from critics. But it was funny. I'm sorry. It was great. Um, supposedly, in the year 1983, Earth, this is the plot, had been subjected to some cosmic rays, and it gave sociopaths superpowers, resulting in a rise of supervillains known as miscreants. And um, they did things to, nor to everyday people, stealing, robbing, killing, those kind of things. And Emily is a young lady who her geneticist parents were killed by the miscreants. So she vows that she's going to sacrifice everything in her life to find a way to stop the miscreants in the future to develop some superpowers to fight against them. And she does exactly this. Now, she's being bullied by kids in the classroom, and her little best friend, Lydia, stands up for her. They become lifelong friends. However, there is a little instant. Emily is constantly studying. She gives up a lot to study, to do those kind of things. Um... And Lydia is always trying to make sure that Emily doesn't overwork herself. So she has an AP exam. And Lydia talks her into taking about a half hour nap from her studying in 1993. But Lydia falls asleep and they both, they both oversleep. And she wakes up late for that AP exam. Now, Emily is very upset. They have words in these two part ways. And then we find that um, Emily has become a successful scientist and a researcher for her own company and Lydia has become a longshoreman. So Lydia tries to reconnect with Emily when their high school reunion comes around and she invites her to come but she doesn't show up on the night of the reunion. So Lydia decides she's going to go pick her up. So she finds out where the company is she has created and says she wants wants her to come to the reunion. Emily tells her she would have liked to have gone but she forgot about the reunion. And she had to work late that night on a project. So Melissa plays, you know, the true longshoreman drinking beer. She spills some beer on Emily. 
Emily has to go change her clothes and she tells Lydia not to touch anything. Well, you know, that's not going to happen. Lydia accidentally injects herself with the serum that is determined that is created to give a normal person extra superpowers. So, um, since this has happened, Emily tells her she has to finish the rest of the injections. You know, because of what it was. And uh, so she does join her. Emily joins her in taking a different serum, which is pill form. Lydia has to have these awful injections. And it's quite funny, you know, the way that they do things. And you see them go through training and whatnot. And they do become, they finish the treatment, do become superhuman. And um, they stop a, their very first, their very first uh, stopping crime is to stop a, um, a robbery in which there is a fellow uh, named Crab. He is a miscreant that is robbing the store and has crab arms. And uh, Lydia kind of falls in love with the crab. And they get closer. And of course Lydia and Emily get closer and whatnot. And they determine they're going to call themselves Thunder Force. And they go about stopping all kinds of crime. Only there's an election. And in this election, one of those persons, Mr. King, is a miscreant himself. And he is leading this band of miscreants in order to say he's going to stop the crime. Those kind of things. You know, typical politician promises. So, you know, the, some of the typical things. Funny. Lydia goes on a date with Mr. Crab, finds out what's going to be happening, those kind of things. And of course she has a little fling with Mr. What's his face? And uh, the crab is played by just Justin Bateman. And he does an absolutely great job. It's funny. I enjoyed this. I gave it four stars out of five. I found it funny. There is an in ending where Lydia is forced to sacrifice herself. And she does so. But she does survive. So, you know, there's that. I'm sure it would make way for some new videos. You know, them fighting other miscreants, but I doubt that's going to happen because such negative reviews. I did find it funny. I enjoyed it. Some of you may have not. The second movie I watched was The Tomorrow World. It was absolutely fantastic. I give it six out of five stars. <laughs> it was that good, guys. Um, it is a 2021 American military science fiction action film directed by Chris McKay. The picture is produced by David Ellison, Dana Goldberg, Don Granger, David S. Goyer, Jules Daly, and Adam Kohlbrenner, and it was written by Zach Dean. It stars Chris Pratt, Yvonne Strahovski, J.K. Simmons, Betty Gilpin, Sam Richardson, Edwin Hodge, Jasmine Matthews, Ryan Kier Armstrong, and Keith Powers. And this is the science fiction movie shows that there are these creatures. <sighs> Let me see if I can explain this. In the very beginning, I don't remember if it's a soccer or football game, but all of a sudden there's like this big burst of thunder, and you see all these soldiers coming through this smoke through the clouds. These are soldiers from the future, and they're coming back to recruit people from the previous time to come and help 
fight the creatures that have attacked Earth and are taking over the Earth. And there is a sequel in development, they say. Now, what this, the plot follows in 2022, there's a biology teacher, former Green Beret, that fails to get a job at the Army Research Laboratory. And during the broadcast of the World Cup, soldiers from the year 2051 arrive to warn that in their time, humanity is on the brink of extin extinction due to a war with alien invaders referred to as White Spikes. So in November 2048, the White Spikes suddenly appear in northern Russia. Russia. This means that their arrival on Earth was undetected by a satellite or radar, and they proceed to kill the majority of human species within three years. In response, the world's present-day militaries are sent into the future via a wormhole called the Jump Link, where less than 30% survive their seven-day deployment which means there's international draft. So this uh, biology teacher, Dan Forrester, he does get the draft notice, tells his wife and his daughter, Muri, and his wife suggests that they should run and talk Dan into visiting his estranged father, James, who is a mechanical engineer, for help in removing the draft ban attached to his arm. Well, Dan's father had left him and his mother after he returned from Vietnam because he felt it was dangerous to remain with them due to his mental condition and tendency towards anger and violence. And we see a lot of that PTSD with a lot of soldiers who return from war. So Dan is angry and refuses his father's help. And he goes ahead and reports to basic training with his trainees. He does go forward to a battlefield in Miami Beach. Um, the city is already lost, and they're trying to find a way to make it out alive to their next jump. So they find a couple of people who have already been there. One has been there three times. And um, they survived the white spikes and the bombing. But it's not pretty. It, it's pretty violent. Dan wakes up in a military encampment in the Dominican Republic. He reports to his commander, Colonel Forrester, who he discovers is his own grown daughter. And his daughter tells him that they've already developed a anti some kind of uh, toxin that kills the male, male drone white spikes. But it doesn't kill the female queens who are rarer and more dangerous. So Muri wants her father to help her capture a queen white spike so they can use her to formulate a toxin that will kill the females as well. And they do capture one. They do develop a toxin. But during along this way, Dan is determined to get to know his daughter a little better, and she actually tells him that um, after he didn't get that research job, that he was dissatisfied and left and abandoned his family, and that he later died in a car crash in 2030. So... They do get close, they create the toxin that does kill the white spike, but with the future unable to mass produce it, she makes Dan promise to take it back with him so that they can um, reproduce it back then to, you know, back in the past to take care of that. So, he does get back with the serum. 
Um, when he does return, his daughter is killed, and the jump link is destroyed, which kind of means that the future is lost. So he and his wife are brainstorming, and they determine that the white spikes did not come in 2048, but they arrived much earlier. So Dan consults with a couple of high school students who have an interest in volcanoes, and they determine where the white sp spikes have been since 946, that long ago. And um, that the global warming is actually helping them to emerge from those ice caps. So they do go in, and they do save the day, but I'm not going to tell you how it's a great, great way that they do. Um, they do realize that the war has been averted. So Dan goes to his father to make amends. They make amends. And they bring him home to meet his wife and daughter. And they've determined that they're not going to make the same mistakes that Murray says was made. Murray, Mary. Um, in the future. So it is a great movie. I thoroughly enjoyed Tomorrow World. Um, like I said, if I could give it six stars out of five, I would. It's that good. So that is it for Movie and a Stitch. Um, I am looking for my U movie and a V movie. I will probably watch those this week while I'm working on things. I do have to catch up on Nan's Next Knot and my three color challenge. I need to finish it so I'll be working on those. So I will see you again soon. Everybody have a great day and remember be kind to one another. <laughs>